CataractCoach.com. PGY4 Residence, 71st Cataract Case Critique. What's your advice for this young surgeon training? Be sure to watch and leave a comment below. So first things first, you're a resident, you got good draping. I like all the eyelashes out of the way. I like the lid margin sequestered, eyes in primary, good red reflex. Fair enough, I'll take it. There's the para, there's the full fill of viscoelastic. That looks pretty good. Here comes a fixation ring, and let's see the main incision. Yes, we've sped the video up. Incision looks pretty good. Let's take a look. And, okay, like a two-plane kind of effect. Pretty reasonable. I like it so far. Let's see the Rexus. So here, a little more viscoelastic. Okay, like a soft shell technique. That's reasonable. But that may obscure your view a little bit as you try to get the Rexus done. So you'll be watching out a little more carefully here. Here comes a cystitome, looks like. Yeah, turn that thing sideways so you don't chew up your incision. And poking in the capsule and pulling that across, getting that capsule flap turned over. There it is. Now, there's a good video on Cataract Coach about capsule rexus danger zones. If you go to the Cataract Coach website and look up the word, search for danger or danger zone, you'll see. And you'll learn a lot. Again, it's going to be uh, on cataractcoach.com, not on YouTube. So grabbing the capsule, going around, let's see. Getting the rexus done. Not sure exactly how big the rexus is. Maybe it's a little extra juicy. Hard to say because these forceps are not marked off. Probably probably a six millimeter rexus. Maybe it's a little bit generous. Again, we don't know exactly. We'll see at the end of the case when the IOL goes in the bag. But there you go. Rexus complete. It's round. Good pivoting technique that I like that a lot. Rexus is reasonably centered. Let's see the hydrodissection technique. There's a fluid wave. And another one. There's the fluid that goes across. Very nice. And let's see if it spins. Remember, if it does not spin, you will not win. So let's make it spin. So inject more BSS and get that thing spinning. It'll make your life a lot easier. There we go. So this is the beginning of the PGY4 year for this young resident. And this is a video that was shot in July of the senior year. So beginning of the senior year. And already 71 cases done is pretty good. And probably in the senior year, another maybe 200 or so cases, maybe even more than that. So pretty good training here. So now let's see. Here comes a fake approach. Adjust the sleeve. I like that. Take your time. Adjust the sleeve the way you like it. And again, you know there's a full Cataract Coach PDF book on cataractcoach.com? It's free. You go to the website, and there's a free book. You can just download it to any device. Totally free. Now, a great groove down the middle. That looks pretty good. Very nice. Okay, a little more zoom. I'll take that. Um, see the light reflex on the cornea? Get, keep those in the center of the eye. See how the eye is being pushed out of primary a little bit? Those three lights should be in the center of the cornea at all times. That's better. There, much better. See how the difference is? You got a better red reflex? So keep those in the center there. Now, with two instruments of the eye, you control eye movement. So now there's the crack down the middle. So maybe a stop and chop technique. Good crack. Propagate it all the way through. Make sure it's... There you go. Get this thing rotated. Propagate it more if you need to. And let's see what we're doing now. Stop and chop or, okay, groove, divide and conquer. Very reasonable case 71 to do a divide and conquer technique here. So now another groove being created and then splitting it apart. Now ask yourself, what should the FACO settings be here? Hmm, how would you choose that? Well, do you know on cataractcoach.com, there's an entire curriculum series, 25 parts. If you're a resident, watch one every weekend. That'll take you six months. You'll learn a lot, including how to set up all these parameters. How do you choose FACO settings? You don't just say, well, I'll just copy my other co-resident or I'll ask the rep. No, no, no. You're a thinking resident. You think you're for yourself and decide what makes sense for you. Now, there's the other half that's coming up. So, hey, a chop. I like it. So, so, so kind of divide and conquer, kind of stop and chop. I'll take it. Let's get that last piece out. My advice is the next case you should just do, just commit to stop and chop. So you're doing a good job here. Now getting that last piece out. I like your attending holding the drape out of the way. That's a very sweet attending. Good professor there. And there are the last pieces coming out. And I, oh, don't do that. Don't lose the infusion there. You saw there? Hey, remember, check out our podcast every single week. We have a brand new, beautiful podcast teaching you the secrets to success in your future. If you're a resident, this is literally the way you will succeed in your future. We will spill all the secrets. Just check it out. Now, cortex removal, let's see. Looks like a soft polymer tip, coaxial IA, and then take it on the cortex nice and easy. Instead of stripping a little bit of the time, I encourage you to try to do it more circumferential. Yeah, instead of just stripping a little bit, a little bit radially, try circumferentially. 
And let's see, there we go. It looks look like a pretty big Rex. It's not the best centration of the Rexes, but it's, it's tolerable for K71. Listen, you're doing a great job. I got no bad critiques for you, but you, I can tell that this is less than 100 cases done. And the little incremental things that you can do better. And also, why is there a subconscious uh, hemorrhage there? You know, in your, in your private practice, when you go graduate in the future, that patients are going to complain if they have that subconscious hemorrhage. So make sure you don't cause that too often here. Here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. You say, what about polishing the undersurface of the enter capsule room? It's not entirely required here. Do not worry. You can save the finesse stuff for later as you get better and better. And then get that arm opened up. And there's the haptic opened up. Get this lens centered. Again, see those Purkinje images? You need those in the center of the cornea. That's okay right there. Oh, you move the lens to get under it easily. Well, I'm glad you're going behind the optic to remove viscoelastic. That's an important thing. When you start putting in some more torque eye wells, you'll really need to remove all that viscoelastic. So good thing you're learning it now. And you'll also need to do a little bit more of the overlap of the optic by the caps rexus. So that's a pretty generous rexus there. It's just about six millimeters. I think the patient will do beautifully and be very happy. But yeah, for your future improvement, I'd say let's uh, work on the rexus there. Let's work on keeping the eye in primary. Let's graduate you all the way to stop and chop. No need to do like a halfway divide and conquer. And that looks great. And let's say, no, and no more subconjunctival hemorrhage. All right, looks like the, the finger tonometer just to check the pressure. And maybe get a wax cell and check your incision. There's the finger tonometer. And make sure the pressure is reasonable. And that's a great case. So, hey, you leave a comment below, my dear listeners and viewers and fans here. Let's help this young doctor out. And remember, check out our podcast every week, a brand new podcast. You will learn so much. I promise you, you will thank me later. Check it out.